My family tree on both sides has been affected by the use of famine and starvation by the British Empire, both in India, where my family were forced to leave to go to the Caribbean over a hundred years ago, and in Ireland, where both sides of my grandparents' families suffered losses and traumas in the aftermath of the Great Hunger. The Irish and Caribbean diaspora understand very well the starvation that is being inflicted on North Gaza today. And we do not just want a ceasefire, we want an end to the occupation and an end to the settler apartheid regime that has dispossessed Palestinian people as the British has dispossessed the Irish. <laughs> Much of what is done in settler colonies like Canada, the US and Israel in Palestine was done first to the Irish. And it has been going on for over a thousand years. We, better than anyone, should never betray this history. I stand here to apologise to Palestine that Ireland and the Irish are not doing more for your liberation. Indeed, we have never done enough for our own. This week has been the first week of Ramadan. For North Gaza, fasting as part of their faith has been devastated by the enforced starvation of all the West supporting the blockade of food and aid. Children are dying daily. This week we have seen images of Gazans with grass in their mouths, eating grass to break their fast. This is a powerful memory of trauma for Irish people because we know that many Irish people were found after the Great Hunger with grass instead of food in their mouths. Enforced starvation is something that Ireland shares with Gaza. It was worse, the worst of many ongoing starvations, the Great Hunger of 1845 to 52. The British took over Ireland in the Act of Union in 1801. The six counties of Ulster, I am from County Down, remain under British rule, cut off from the rest of the country by a border that has seen many bloody and violent histories. I have been at the border, I have been at the end of a rifle point of a British soldier just for being there. All borders must be abolished. The Great Hunger was devastating. It reduced the population of Ireland by almost two million. Famine, forced migration, disease. Colonisers here in Turtle Island have used and continue to use starvation and disease as deliberate genocidal tools targeting indigenous peoples here whose access to their sovereign systems of relational survival and abundance are controlled by the state. The British are the source of many of our present catastrophes from Turtle Island to Ireland to Palestine. Europe's history of genocide is long and bloody, and we must connect what we see happening with Haiti, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Sudan, Syria, Lebanon, and Yemen. <laughs> Haiti was the first country to abolish slavery and set up a free black republic which outlawed white male property ownership. For this radical vision of freedom beyond racial capitalism, it continues to be preyed upon by Canada, France, the US and the British that have never released their grip. Today, Haiti is on the verge of being invaded again by the, these global imperialists. It has been sent poisoned rice to feed its people. All of these genocides are connected. Ireland and Palestine share so much of our history. It was the same Arthur Balfour who wrote the 1917 Balfour Declaration, devastatingly giving Palestine over as a Jewish homeland. Balfour, like Theodore Herzl, was a thorough anti-Semite who believed that there needed to be a solution to the Jewish diaspora. Balfour's declaration was directly linked to a rise in anti-Semitism in Europe as countries sought to expel their Jewish peoples. Balfour was a white supremacist who believed in racial hierarchies. He, the same Balfour was also the Chief Secretary of Ireland, a true racist settler, and we say thank you to the activist in Cambridge this week who recently shredded his portrait. All masters must fall. In Ireland, Balfour suppressed agrarian workers and opposed home rule. Insisting on full British control, he passed the Land Act, which continued to move colonised Ireland into a property-based society. And the drastic effects are still with us. Today, the Irish government represents its own property capitalist class and not the Irish people. This is why it must be land back from Ireland to Turtle Island to Palestine. Ireland has become a place of white supremacy. It no longer recognises birthright citizenship and this was a racist response to, to immigration in the, in the 1990s and 2000s. People will deny the facts, but there are black Irish people and 
just as there are black Palestinians. Our being cannot be contained by borders. As an immigrant settler and as a member of the Caribbean and Irish diaspora, it is my duty to challenge the colonial settler state of Canada and especially its part in the ongoing oppression of Palestine. Colonizers make money out of our deaths, profit out of our land and capital from our knowledge and cultures, but we will not be erased. I leave you with the words of Bobby Sands, who led the hunger strikes in the hate block against British internment in the 1980s. They thought they had buried us, but they did not know we were seats. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine.